Good afternoon, everyone. So today's lecture is estimator design, which includes observer and Kalman filter. So I will begin with observers. And for lecture today, I expect that I am going to finish the first four points, and we will finish the remaining uh, next week. So first about observer. So what is observer? Um, what you have learned before that uh, you know how to simulate state equation that uh, derive from physical system in the form of differential equation, uh, um, <coughs> system of differential equation to be precise. Uh, as you can see here, h dot equal to a h plus b u but uh, you have made some assumption in order to have a simple equation. Um, so what kind of assumption uh, that is commonly occur? Uh, I, I give one example um, of a certain assumption. For example, in the DC motor model, uh, you have a commutator um, okay, so what is commutator? For example, like this, you so you supply voltage from the plus and minus uh, terminal. For example, plus to this one and minus to this one using a commutator. Okay, a contact, and this one can spin. It's been at a certain angle of velocity omega. So when the commutator uh, get out of the contact, a new winding with another commutator contact to this terminal. So it means um, you supplying current or voltage to the circuit uh, in a, in a way that. Uh, the, the voltage that supply could be, uh, I would say, where the torque that generate on the system, because you, you may have multiple winding, right? You have multiple winding, like this. Yeah, multiple winding like this. So, because the magnetic field only one direction, for example, from top to bottom, it's magnetic field. So when the, the winding creates some angle with respect to the magnetic field, uh, the torque that acts on the circuit would be in the form of sine wave. But because you have multiple winding, then the sine wave is not a fully sine wave. Instead, the torque that generates on uh, act on the rotor to be like this okay uh, so this one is a part of sine wheel for one winding and this one is another part of sine wheel of the next winding and so on the torque generate like this uh, in the modeling we don't we don't care about the shape like this but we just assume that it is constant like this so this one th one of assumption okay in order to have a simple equation as a linear system and so it means that um, this the, this model does not completely represent the actual system so now we want to simulate uh, yeah if we, we make comparison of the simulation of the simple of the simplified model uh, we call it uh, its simulation with respect to the true system so true system in true system we account uncertainty for the model for the sim its simulation like this we ignore the uncertainty so if we compare the simplified model it's sim with its true 
of course we get the gap between the, the two and the longer we operate the longer we observe the hard, the larger the gap between the two okay this is one thing uh, about uncertainty on the state equation and the next is the uncertainty on the measurement equation so this is a simplified model for output y and the actual when you use sensor to measure so this is supposed to be actual quantity but then the sensor is corrupted by noise so what you get is the signal plus the noise okay for example you are supposed to measure uh, y through the black one here the black one but the sensor is corrupted by noise give you the red one uh, suppose the me you measure state directly that's why I say here y equal to h because the simulation h with the simplified version simplified model to be like this so the simulation of output to be like this so the true output is the black here the simulation is here you, you get a gap but because the sensor corrupt the signal then you get the red one so you can see that the computed output and the measure output are completely different and the longer it takes the larger the gap between the two right so then um, <coughs> we have the idea to to use an observer such that you have h true and h hat not to be uh, different i mean the gap does not accumulate over time we have we want to be something uh, want something to be like this right no no matter how long you operate you get the estimate state the estimate state to be almost same as h true not to be like this if you only rely on the model the simplified model you're gonna get this kind of gap okay so what can we do in order to achieve this goal we use the advantage of the measurement information so we we we, we know the system model uh, of all those it's simplified model then we use the measure as a, in a, as additional information in order to update the state and that 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 one is called observers observer state right so two information together one is based on model and another one is based on measurement of the output okay and so the first we try Luenberger observer uh, which has this form so this is based on model the simplify model here and this is based on the measurement i mean we extract the information from measurement so what does uh, how how can we use the right term here well um because why can we compute based on model as well right and sorry this is this should be called y hat so we can compute estimated output based on model and then we find the error between estimate output and the measurement of the output so this y is the actual measurement if we have discrep discrepancy between the two which means we should update the state because our estimation is not correct so we update the state by adding this and uh, we have the Lundberger gain right because Lundberger gain it depends on the dynamic depend on the system depend on a and b something like that and also depend on c um yeah the, not not on b sorry the uh, a and c are the most crucial parameters for the system for the, this kind of observer so if i manipulate i mean i re uh, group of the right hand side of this equation i got the coefficient of h hat to be this 
and this is uh, just consider uh, uh, remaining part so it's clearly that uh, x had dot converge to a certain i mean yeah con converge to uh, a certain input u then we need to have this one uh, so called uh, stable matrix right what is the condition to get a stable matrix here the condition is that again all eigenvalues of this matrix to be negative right just the same as uh, con uh, state feedback we want we want to control so we need uh, state to be converged so the coefficient must uh, the matrix coefficient must have all negative eigenvalues right um, let me give an example to illustrate this idea um, let's say we have a dynamic equation second order if you look at it carefully it looks like a RLC circuit right uh, so suppose we want to use observer to adapt to the uncertainty okay to have yeah to 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 estimate state according to the uncertainty and also filter the noise because if we use raw measurement of the output we got noise if you the right observer we can estimate state more or less precise and then the estimate output compute based on estimate state would be filter would be a filter signal from the output filter mean like this let's say this is the the, the red one is the actual measurement and we expect that uh, we can compute y estimate to be all, uh, more or less same as the black one okay uh, so uh, first we, we have uh, single input single output uh, ordinary differential equation like d then we transform it into state space you have that many times uh, then we got the uh, first order of two state uh, in, the, in the form of ordinary differential equation and let's say we can measure both voltage of the output and derivative of voltage at the output okay. uh, let's say voltage of the output is the voltage of the capacitor so derivative of voltage of the capacitor is just current okay so it means like we can measure voltage and current okay um, now let me explain about the noise term the uncertainty how can we simulate uncertainty for example in here uncertainty that uh, uh, that that um, yeah actually we don't really know the uncertainty of the system itself because we we don't know the exact uncertainty we just use random random signal so the uncertainty is become just random then if our observer is robust even though uncertainty is random we can estimate state correctly that's the whole idea Uh, so uh, I will just use random and the, the random itself also has like uh, we, we, we should quantify uh, quantify how large is the random so le let's say we have h1 and h2 here let's say uh, the, the, the level of random of the first equation is one value and the level of random of the second equation is another value but sometimes those randomness correlate okay yeah just sometimes i mean in actual system may correlate but anyway for simulation and for the sake of uh, simplification and also we don't really know how correlate they are 
then we just use uh, independent randomness. So it means you, you can use the diffusion matrix that is diagonal matrix. Uh, I can I'll illustrate here. Uh, let me call a uh, random omega 1 of t um, as a normal distribution. Normal means it's Gaussian, it's white, the mean value is 0, and covariant is 1, right? No, normal distribution. And this one also normal distribution, but then we want to um, we want to simulate that the mean value is not normal for this one, also not uh, not normal for this one. Then we, we need the diffusion matrix Q, which means let's say if I use this one as a vector, and then I use a matrix Q like this, so I have like Q one one Q, this one just say zero, this one Q two two and this one is zero and you can use a, a square root of this yeah square root of this because q is called diffusion which uh, which or in some sense it's equivalent to covariance so co covariance is square of standard deviation right so square root like this represent standard deviation um, Maybe okay. Let, let me ask you one question. Uh, let me give you one signal idea. So look at this signal and and then uh, let's say for this signal I have standard deviation sigma one. Let's say just say uh, three, maybe point three. Usually it's not big. And then I have an, another signal this one it's a random signal the blue one so what is the, what is the expected standard deviation of this uh, it should be bigger than Sigma 1 or less than Sigma 1 yeah so it must be bigger than Sigma 1 for example 0 0.5 0 0.6 okay and what is covariance? If I want to compute covariance of the red one, covariance of red one is just sigma square, right? Yeah. So it just sigma square is covariant. And this one is sigma 2 square. Okay? Covariant. So if QC represents covariance, but to be precise, it's called diffusion matrix. Uh, and uh, this one, uh, the noise on the measurement equation, yeah, this one it has covariant R. So you, if you want to simulate this term, you can use square root of um, square root of v one zero. Oh, not v one. Sorry, R one one. R22 times let, let's call V1T V2T and these are normal okay these two are also normal okay all right <clears throat> okay next Another important thing, um, let's say, yeah, when you do computation, uh, the algorithm that, that is uh, implemented in the toolbox must use numerical method, right? So numerical method can be done at certain sample time not exactly continuous right must be at certain sample time so if you have uncertainty to be precise here uh, we call white noise here and more precise in here we call it brown in motion but uh, it's another topic a very huge topic i am not, i'm not going to go to detail into brown in motion um 
what I'm trying to uh, catch your interest is that if you want to simulate a Brownian motion in this continuous differential equation like this, uh, what what you need to do? I mean, from because when you implement numerical method, it's gonna be discrete. It's not really continuous. So you when you transform from continuous to discrete, what can you do with this Brownian motion? Yeah, this is uh, we call approximation using Euler Maruyama method. This is Euler method. Just as usual, you have seen before for the state equation for Ward Euler. But then you add this term. This term is called first order approximation. First order approximation of Taylor's theory. And you can call this one as half order approximation. This one just half order. Why half order? Because you have scale root here. Okay? Scale root of sample time t here. And this approximation is called Euler L. Maruyama. Alright. And then when you implement in the MATLAB, for example, or SciLab, um, you write the right hand side. And then you use integrator. Most of the time, you write you. For example, here you define it by MATLAB function. Or you use function in, yeah, you know, uh, user defined function in SciLab, and then you use integrator. Oh, I'm sorry, here it should be here, here. You use integrator here. So how you write down the right hand side here? You okay? How you write down right hand side here? You need to input this kind of thing. Okay, right hand side to be like this. Why? Because when it compute, yeah. Uh, to be precise, to get a, pre, a high, high precision of simulation, you use discrete integrator instead of this one. Okay, instead of this one, you use discrete integrator. Okay. So this one is not uh, the best option. So discrete integrator, when you choose, uh, when you choose Euler method from the library or the setting, then you're gonna compute uh, this way. You get the uh, previous value at the right hand side times sampling time so when this one time to the right hand side you get ts cancel with the scale root of ts like this then you get scale root of ts like this yeah so i'm trying to show you how you can simulate this using scilab or matlab okay And the next part, uh, I'm gonna show how you can find good value of gain L. Okay. So let let me review. Yeah, we, we can use the the existing toolbox that you learned before. So what is that toolbox? Uh, so before when you use um, state feedback. When you you state feedback, you get you have h dot equal to a minus uh, b k a dot and plus um, and yeah no no more yeah you just have this maybe you have uh, the uh, scaling factor or something but let, let's say just discuss on conversion. So in here, in order to choose the correct value of k, what you do? What toolbox you have used? You use place, right? Pole placement. You select poles. You select poles equal to, okay, 
pole one, pole two, depend on the order of your system. And then you can use two box place, place, and then you use your system A, B, and then poles, right? Then you can get the gain K. This is what you do. And now for observer, here, observer, where is the equation, main equation? Yeah, here. Uh, now you, you want to have conversion of the H hat. Right? So divergent system is not interesting, right? It's not useful, actually. So now you have um, observer equal to a minus R C H hat and plus the remaining term and you need to choose the right uh, so that you have converged state estimate state so what do you do uh, does this look 100% like this one this look like this because C is information from the system C you, you already know from your system A you already know from your system now you try to find L for here you know A, you know B, and you want to find K. Then you can use the place like this. Right? So, can you, you, can you immediately use K equal to place of A, C, and poles? Is okay or not? Okay or not okay? Oh, sorry, K, not KL in this case. We, we want to find L. Place, what does it mean? It's place means place the poles. You, when we uh, place the poles, because poles are the eigenvalue of the matrix. So you select all negative eigenvalue, at least the negative on the real part. And so you, we, you want to, if you imagine in a complete plane, you want to place uh, the poles on that, that have negative real parts, so on the left half plane. Then what value of K? <coughs> right? Yeah, what value of K that you can place such pole on, on the left half plane? That's the meaning. Um, so this is correct? Almost, so it's not, it's not exactly the same, right? Why the position of L and position of K are not the same? You got it. So how you can get the the same location? Well, actually, you what you need to do is just you transpose. First, you take a trans um. You transpose, well, when you, yeah, you transpose A minus uh, C, then you can have A transpose minus, when you transpose these two, what you get? You get three C transpose and L transpose, right? So now you just imagine that this is just another A, and this is just another B. And this is just another K. So now you get the same location so that you can use place. It's just a small trick. All right. So back to our uh, example here. So try to get this shot uh, uh, 0, 1, minus 1, minus 1. And here is. C just identity, okay. So, yep. Back to our example, we have h1 dot h2 dot equal to um, zero one minus one minus one and 
H1, H2. This is A, right? Plus uh, B is uh, 0, 1, U. And then Y equal to C is just 1, 0, 0, 1. And then H1, H2. Right? And then plus um, yeah, D is just zero. Don't care about it. So now you have you can define A. You can define uh, B. B is not uh, useful in for observer now. And you have C. All right. So uh, then you use. Uh, in the code, you use a equal to uh, 0, 1, minus 1, minus 1, we, uh, not b, c equal to i of 2, identity. And then um, you can use l. Uh, to be precise, L transpose, right? Because when you when you place here, L, here is just L transpose. So you can get L equal to place. Oh no, pole. Choose pole first. Let's choose pole equal to minus one. Oh, maybe too small. Let's say minus three and minus four. Okay, and then L transpose equal to place uh, A transpose and then C transpose and then pole. Alright, so once you got L here, you can uh, use L in here okay yeah yeah um, because you can compute L transpose there and then to get L here you just use L transpose here and then transpose like this all right uh, so now let's practice on uh, this observer um, uh, let me explain first how you can start this one yeah so you consider first build the true system you try to simulate the true system so true system you start from um, I mean this part just try to complete this part first okay so from here to here okay this part and uh, this one just these two are just constant no worry right okay so maybe include them oh so bad that i cannot use uh, control z so it's better not to use dash line right? so first try this part simulate this part uh, uh, this one this block i just want you to to know what the name of the block okay it's just to find the name um, so I suggest first you take out this one number one and then you write the dynamic equation inside here all right based on based on this based on this so what you need you need QC you need TS right you need a B something uh, this one just random Okay, this one, okay, it's just random. And after you complete this, you take this one, number two, and configure the parameter in here. And then step three, you code, you code in here. Uh, you code in here based on this equation, output equation. Uh, oh, just here based on output equation here right but you add uh, noise okay noise uh, square root of r times uh, 
times random okay random and yeah random uh, two one this one also time scale of QC it's random and then for you take the scope and five you select constant for TS six you select sine wheel okay and then seven eight you choose this constant right so go follow this way one by one and connect one by one okay after then I will explain this after you finish this because you finish this part you can simulate the true system okay the, the system that has model and add random of un to represent uncertainty right okay so now let's practice So in order to create the MATLAB function block of before you use integrator, so MATLAB function block here, you have output is dot, and you have input as a QC, TS, U, and H. This one is output. Um, so you re review the equation it's uh, yeah the transformation from okay a dot equal to a h plus b u plus square root of q c times random random n to one to b uh, h so you have h k plus one no I, I prefer to use this hk equal to a hk minus one uh, no sorry this one first hk minus one plus ts time uh, a hk minus one plus b u k minus one and plus this one you have square root of q c over ts and times random to one okay so you use this one as right hand side in inside here say so this part this part you use inside this okay two one yeah? right so uh it's dot okay function is function h dot equal to and uh, fcn of qc ts u h right and then you define a equal to uh, yeah you define by yourself And then B equal to right, and then you write out H dot equal to A times H plus B times U, and then plus square root of QC over TS times random and to one okay yeah just like this okay so now I want you to simulate in a different way 
uh, this way is more convenient if you want to change parameter uh, first you create a script okay and sell a script uh, with the name that you prefer and then you write down some all the parameters like ts a b c d maybe d you don't need in our this simulation we don't have d uh, q c r and then you use pole as minus three minus four and you find l transpose as the gain for the observer and then you get l equal to l transpose and transpose again uh, this line for this line you can call the simulink model that you have built but now you need to modify a little bit uh, why you need to modify because I want you to use the parameter from here because you already defined here and when you execute this script the variable a b c all of here or are stored in the workspace and then the simulink the simulink model here can use the variable a b c q and r from the workspace also ts okay and one more thing uh, actually you can go to model setting and use variable step because yeah because I, I forgot to tell you because you already use fit step in here this is this good step so you just uh, define ts inside here as uh, sample time to be ts okay sample time use sample time at the sample time and you use ts because to, ts is known in the workspace already so it doesn't matter you don't need to use the value because when you want to change the sample time you just change here right so it will be very very convenient and uh, this syntax is used to call the simulink model it it's gonna call the simulink model because I sell the simulink model as a sim1 underscore uh, Luenberger observer okay. Luenberger observer dot SRH yeah uh, Luenberger, yeah. Um, then, uh, actually, I, I just want to return some value of the output or simulated output, and I mean all computed outputs, whether the true one or the estimate one, right, to the workspace return all this value to the workspace as you can see here I use the workspace name as out.by uh, true out.by underscore head like this so oops sorry so this out you must use out as well uh, to make sure that you don't you don't get a different name of the variable when returned to the workspace right and then you define by true by head like this later on you can do some plot on the graph or whatever you can do in here so you just run one clicks on the in this way it can be convenient if you click run on here on the script and everything is run and you get the report of the graph if you add some plot here so it's very convenient right yeah but or what after you run this you can check the result just looking at the scope the ball click on the scope it can be done as well this uh, this way as well so like that right so now you try to modify it so first you create this script After you're done with this, you build, you modify your simulating model uh, in the way that you can bring 
constant, all the constant from workspace like this. So as you can see here, the conversion is very slow. Why? Because the gain uh, is not uh, good enough. I mean, not so good. So how can we choose a better gain L? If you want to have faster convergence, you need to place the pole far away from the imaginary axis. For example, you modify this one to be minus 10 and you modify this one to be uh, minus 15. Okay? And then you run this one again, run it again. After you run, you click on the scope to see the result. Okay, next, let's see example two. Can we use uh, ob uh, Lernberger Observer to estimate parameter? Yes. Uh, if you you can check your system that it's observable. So anyway, now I uh, give you another example. Then we will check the uh, we will transform it into state space first, and then we check the observability, right? before you already learn controllability okay so in this example a given as a dynamic system as you can see here omega dot equal to this and you got uh, parameter a let's say for true system you choose a to be phi and you want to estimate this let's i mean when you use estimation, estimator, you assume that you don't know the parameter on the, the true system and you want to estimate it. Okay? Just based on the input you give to the, your system and the measurement from the output. Right? This is the idea. Because we don't have the real physical system, so we need to simulate the true system. So true system with certain parameter, and then we simulate the estimator and we pretend that estimator does not know the parameter, and let's see if estimator can find that parameter or not, right? Um, so first, let's transform it into state space. Uh, so we choose h one equal to omega as the the first state and then because we want to estimate parameter then we must consider the parameter as state as well right uh, so here are we have our state equation and here is output equation now we choose h1 as omega h2 as the state a then the first equation would be like this minus h1 come from minus omega u uh, h2 come from a because h2 is a and this one still the same and then h2 because h2 equal to a its derivative should be zero and then we add some uncertainty because parameter may change in the real physical system right because for example resistor in uh, initial and uh, coefficient torque coefficient of a motor may change according to the temperature right? so parameter never a purely constant um, then we rewrite it as a state space uh, h dot equal to a h plus b u like this okay and now we only have one output uh, because we can only measure omega we cannot measure parameter right because we are trying to find that parameter inside the state model so the matrix c is to be like this now okay 
Uh, again, D, D is zero. Um, like I said, first we need to check the observability. So let me introduce observability here. For the previous example, observability, of course, the matrix of observability has full rank. That's why we can, observe, uh, we can have conversion of estimation. Uh, but I did not show how you can find observability. Uh, so the matrix of observability is just call it uh, OBS equal to uh, C and then C times A and then C square no sorry C times A square so it depends on the dimension of your system you may have like uh, only C and then C A if you have only two dimension or you may have up to here if you have three dimension right um, so the system is observable if the observability matrix has full rank. System is observable if and only if the observability matrix. OBS has full rank. How can you check whether it has full rank or not? Yeah, which means determinant of OBS is not zero. This one? Sorry? OBS is a vector. No, it has to be square matrix. Square matrix? Yeah, otherwise you cannot compute determinant. Yeah. yeah. So let's say if you have C as one row, let's say the dimension C is one zero like this. Uh, first you have this C one zero and then you have C times A. C times A is supposed to be like this, like this. Right? Then you just check this matrix. Okay, got it? Alright, so now in our case, um, C is 1, 0 and A is minus 1, 1, 0, 0. Now let me uh, find observability matrix. First, 1, 0 from C, now uh, next you, you multiply C with A, right? So C times the, uh, the first column of A, you get uh, minus one here, and then C times the second column here, you get one. Clearly the determinant is not zero, right? Determinant of OBS equal to one times one minus zero, then one. So different from zero. So it means system is observable. Observable. Then you can estimate parameter from the state mo state model, right? Um, so again in order to simulate the system you can just do the same uh, simply model but you just modify the matrix A, B and C right and modify the equation in the state equation for both or for both no, oh, sorry. 
uh, because you already transform into state space, so it's it's just a h plus b u. You don't need to modify at all actually, right? Just modify the value of a and b in the script here, right? Um, I don't have here. Yeah. Yeah, so actually you can practice by just copy the the existing model to be a new one, second one, and then you try to simulate. I think it does not take much time because you just need to change ABC. Yeah, and also initial condition. Don't forget that uh, the value A here is 5. So initial condition for H2 h2 at time 0 is also 5, 5 all the time, supposed to be 5 all the time, but uh, because of some uncertainty, maybe just fluctuation around 5 a little bit, okay? 